by myself. Oh, I didn't see you there. Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, you need help with something? I Steam Deck? I, I thought there was like a hundred other media outlets that have access to that now. Oh, wait, you're telling me they can't answer that question? Well, you came to the right place. Hey guys, Turkey here. Hope you're having a good one. Now that we are a week past the official release of the Steam Deck, and overall, I'd say the community is giving some huge thumbs up for the software and the hardware for the Steam Deck, <laughs> but for my channel as well as my overclocked hack and deck or my Steam Deck development kit, uh, we're, we do feel a little bit neglected. But I guess, lucky for me, a lot of y'all keep coming back to the channel and asking questions about how well is the Steam Deck going to handle and play some of the games within Windows. Now, I'm kind of shocked to actually be getting a lot of these requests because there's over a hundred different media outlets that have hands on the actual hardware, but unfortunately, AMD and Valve have yet to release an official graphics driver for the Van Gogh APU. So guys, you've come to the right place and we're going to be talking about Windows performance in some games that just aren't supported within the SteamOS environment. Now, before we get to the performance numbers, I want to talk a little bit about why you would want to stick with SteamOS 3 as opposed to ditching it for the tried and true Windows operating system. Because let's be clear, guys, SteamOS 3 was built from the ground up in order to support the entire unit as a whole. From the hardware's perspective, SteamOS 3 is going to provide support for the drivers, the different kernel level fixes for like the CPU and the GPU and the schedulers and all that. And let's not forget all the other hardware components like the Wi-Fi driver, the trackpad, the rumble, all the other different hardware that's built into the Steam Deck that is integrated into SteamOS 3 and it should be transparent to the user. But the operating system doesn't just interface with the hardware, it also interfaces with the user. So all the different Steam UI elements such as fast resume, game scope, frame limiting built into that and like global FSR, all of these other features are baked into SteamOS and ditching that for the tried and true Windows, I don't think that's worth the trade off for most gamers that are going to be on the Steam Deck. And let's not forget, guys, you don't actually have to buy a Windows key. It's provided with the unit. You don't have to pay any additional money to Microsoft. And to me, that is always a win. However, though, Windows, it does have its advantages, and probably the most prevalent one is that 100% of the games and launchers that are available today will work just right out of the box with Windows. You don't have to go through Proton, Lutris, or Heroic Launcher. There's no other bells and whistles you have to install to get that stuff working. You just go to the website, download it, install your games, you're good to go. However, there is one huge red flag when it comes to running Windows on your Steam Deck, and that is you lose access to the Steam Verification Program. If you're not aware what that program is, Valve actually goes and tests each of the games that are on its Steam uh, library and sees how well it is actually going to work on the Steam Deck. So they check for controller compatibility, they make sure that the UI itself is legible from the Steam Deck, make sure you got the right controller glyphs that are popping up on your screen, as well as the game boots in a graphic setting that will work well on the Steam Deck. And with Windows, you're not going to be getting any of that. You're going to be getting a base level computer based experience and any optimizations is up to you as the user to figure out. So what you see is what you get. So now that we know some of the differences between Windows and SteamOS 3, it's time to pivot more towards the Microsoft based solution. But I got to do a little bit of calibration on my own test setup, because as you guys see, this is not in fact a Steam Deck I have. It is an overclocked Steam development kit that was actually prescribed by Valve. And I took some of my hardware know how in order to boost its performance to get it up to speed. I've compared its performance to the previews. And now that we've got a plethora of data at our hands, let's do some additional calibration to see just how well my Steam Deck compares to some of the best media outlets out there. Now, the biggest game that we've seen a lot of performance metrics from is Control. Digital Foundry captured just the right amount of data for us for this calibration, where they gave us frame by frame output for the very first moments of the game. Now, I'm going to be putting both of these videos side by side. And guys, it looks like Control performs just as well in Linux as it does in Windows. And let's not forget, my setup is matching within a frame of the Steam Deck. Now, this is a huge testament to just how far Linux gaming has come and just all the commitment that the software developers are putting into both the operating system, Proton and the games themselves, especially in graphically demanding games like Control. 
In my Steam Deck validation video, I used Linus Tech Tips with Forza Horizon 5 in order to compare performance. Linus Tech Tips reported the deck runs at right at 60 FPS at 800p with the low detail settings. And with my particular setup, my hack and deck was measuring right at 61 FPS. Now that we're in Forza's natural environment and there are no compatibility layers, it's not surprising to me that we see an additional 10% performance improvement. As a side note, I can also confirm what Digital Foundry claimed in their video, that the benchmark is significantly heavier than actual gameplay. So guys, if you're seeing some additional frame rate, it might be a good idea to bump up to the medium detail setting, or just be happy and cap your frame rates at 60 FPS for a little bit extra battery life. Now that we're all calibrated up and I can confirm that my Steam Deck development kit performs just as good as a Steam Deck, we can talk about some of the games we're testing. Now I'm going to be using my Linux versus the Twitch top 20 games list because there were quite a few really popular games that are just not supported right now within Linux. And now that we've got Windows, I want to show you guys what those games are going to look like. So I've got eight games and let's start off with some Apex Legends. Now, as of recording, there's been some reports over on Twitter that there are some staging branches where Apex Legends does officially work within Proton and the Linux gaming environment. Now, again, it's been within 48 hours of recording this video, so I, there's not a lot I can do. I could have thrown this whole spot out, but I do think it's valid to put this in here at the first spot so we can kind of see a kind of Windows versus Linux gaming experience. Now, the Fox has got some really good gameplay footage shown over on his Twitter page, so I'm going to be putting these up side by side and kind of comparing what the performance looks like against the two. Now, as for Windows, I installed Apex Legends directly through the Steam UI, and it does in fact install and boot the EA Origin launcher just straight up. And upon loading the game, it just works just fine at low detail settings. Frame rates can go anywhere up to about 100 FPS, but intense gunfights, we do expect to drop to a commendable 50 to 60 FPS. My only gripe with this game is seeing enemies at a distance. Now, even if the gameplay is fluid enough, if character models are only a couple pixels tall, you can imagine that you're going to get ripped to shreds if you're not quick on your sticks and you can get to cover. I've seen a lot of requests to see just how well Genshin Impact runs on the deck, so let's give it a whirl. Even if this is based on a mobile game, Genshin Impact on the PC, its install size is a beefy 40-ish gigabytes of space. Unless you picked up a higher-end model, this game will definitely be landing on your SD card. Double-clicking on the shortcut on my desktop, it does go straight to the Genshin Impact launcher, and it does look like we have some scaling issues that are going on. It looks like the launcher boots up to 1080p, so it is a little bit difficult to navigate this, but we are able to slide our mouse over to the button. This could be a configuration issue on my side. Once the game is up, the opening menu it just doesn't recognize my controller input, so luckily we have the trackpads and we should be able to manually swipe the mouse to get in. After that, at 800p and medium detail settings, this game runs fantastic. With the simplistic art style, the combat mixes perfectly with the controller, and this game will feel incredibly natural on the deck. It's hard to say no to a free-to-play action MMO-ish RPG, but in terms of the deck, Lost Ark does have a few bit of downsides. On the initial load, this game's HUD is incredibly small, and it typically defaults to about 80 or 90%, and according to the documentation, it can be boosted up to 110%. Now, when it comes to the menus, you can kind of get away with it, but this also impacts some of the legibility for the keybinds in order to activate our abilities from the game, because I'm not very familiar with the different keystrokes just yet, so I don't know if it's the left shoulder button plus the Y button. It's not, it's not very clear, and unfortunately the text size is just really small. As for performance, the game defaults to high detail settings, and at 800p, it does look to be running pretty well. But I would recommend that you turn down the settings to medium in order to get a more fluid 60fps experience. But if you're willing to go down to 30fps with a frame limiter, I imagine Lost Ark would play very well with the setup and could buy you some additional battery life. As opposed to what we saw on Twitter about Apex Legends, when it comes to Destiny 2, Bungie has just outright said that they are not going to support Proton. 
with the release of The Witch Queen, Destiny 2 has been ramping up in popularity, so how exactly will it play on the deck? Unfortunately, the developers have disabled the ability to use third-party tools to monitor our frame rate, so all I have is this itty bitty block of green text up at the top right of my screen in order to gauge performance. Now the game defaults to medium detail settings and this game looks fantastic on my 7 inch monitor. And overall, the game feels fluid enough to not impact my performance. Controller support is spot on, the text on the screen is crisp and the intro section of the game is a pleasure to run through. Running between 55 and 65 FPS is a great spot for this game, so I'm optimistic to see just how well this game will perform further along the storyline. We've covered Rainbow Six Siege several times here on the channel, and we've proven in both Linux and Windows that the game will play just fine at the detail settings, even at 100% render resolution. Now, the only quirk that I want to mention with Siege here is with the use of the controller. Though it's supported by the game, there could be some finer movement controls that might just not be intuitive for the average gamer. Fortunately, the Steam Deck it does have additional paddles on the back available for binding, so if you plan on jumping into this competitive shooter, there are plenty of opportunities to tweak your setup and to get good. Halo brings me back to my college days, and it reminds me of why I grew up on a mouse and keyboard. This slower paced gameplay compared to Apex and other arena shooters is far more conducive to a controller, and the graphical style here also lends well to the deck's 7 inch screen. Unfortunately, this game is really heavy in the graphics department, where I'm only able to get between 35 and 50 FPS at the low detail settings, but the gameplay actually feels on point with earlier console generations, so the lower frame rate, to me at least, isn't really a deficit here. With relatively short matches and from what I understand to be an excellent campaign, Halo Infinite within Windows on the deck should be a great time. Call of Duty Modern Warfare has been a good shooter over the past couple years and its popularity alone might just force people to load Windows onto their deck. But Keep in mind guys, you'll need at least 80 gigabytes or more space on your hard drive for just the Warzone install, and if you're going to load up any of the other game modes or the campaign, it can easily consume an entire 256 gigabyte Steam Deck. Regardless, I am shocked with just how well it plays on the deck. Controller support is baked in, as long as you select it in the options, and at 100% scaled resolutions and low detail settings, I'm able to play around right at 60 FPS. Now, in normal instances, I'd say that this is a pretty bad experience, but on the 7 inch screen for the deck, this looks really good. The only caveat here, similar to what I said with Apex, is just that enemies can be very difficult to see with the incredibly small resolution. And with the huge emphasis on the environment, at least in Warzone, it is very easy to misjudge a bush for a sweaty tryhard. Despite these handicaps, I nearly managed to get a W in my first match, and I remained very competitive in the Gulags as well as other matches. As I said in my short from a few months ago, having Fortnite on the deck is bound to print money. With intuitive controller support, simplistic graphics, and addicting gameplay, Fortnite is a natural fit for the Steam Deck. At 800p in medium detail settings, we are able to cap out our monitor's 60Hz refresh rate and still have decent visuals. Now, I'm terrible at this game, guys, so I'm going to be using the FNCS Open Qualifier match recordings to capture the gameplay footage. These scenes are rendered just as they would be in native gameplay, so this will all translate to the deck very well. With average frame rates above 60fps when a win is on the line, the Steam Deck will be up to the task. Overall, I'm very excited to say that these popular games are going to play very well on the Steam Deck at 800p and lowish quality settings. The only game that's you know questionable in this regard would be Halo Infinite. Now, let's also keep in mind that FSR, though we don't have access to GameScope, you should be able to engage RSR or Radeon Super Resolution, which is the driver level support for FSR. Now that driver has yet to actually officially release for any AMD graphics card, but it checks all the boxes for what it's gonna need to support. And if you're gonna be using your deck in docked mode, definitely engage that with the quality mode setting in order to bump your frame rates even further, or heck, even engaging a 1080p monitor. 
And that's all I've got to say about Windows on the Steam Deck. Let me know down below if you guys are going to stick with SteamOS 3 or if you're going to brave the waters and install Windows on your device. To me, I'm going to stick with SteamOS 3 because I've got access to higher powered gaming systems and I'll just keep those games on there. But I'm really interested to see what y'all are going to load on your deck. Now, as for me, of course, I don't have access to a Steam Deck just yet. I have to wait till after quarter two. So for now, me and my overclocked Steam Deck development kit, we're going to be hanging around. Let me know down below or talk to me over in the community tab what you want me to be testing on this, this little system uh, going into the future. We could do uh, game optimization videos. We can test additional features and we might even be able to do some of those Linux tutorials once SteamOS 3 is released, of course. So that's all I've got today, guys. Thank you all for stopping by. Catch you later, Turk Force.